hello everyone welcome back to my channel if you are new to my channel welcome today i'm going to show you how to make kuli kuli which is also known as ground nut cake kuli kuli can be enjoyed as a snack or used in making dry rub popularly known as yaji suya yaji so the first thing you do is to roast and peel your peanuts i have already done mine this is five cups of peanuts I blended the peanuts into a very smooth paste and let it sit for months so that the oil will be extracted. I have a video on how to do this. I'm going to leave the link in the description box so you can check it out later. Then after extracting some peanut oil, the leftover peanut butter is what we're going to use to make the kuli kuli. Normally when you make peanut oil, the leftover is what is used to make kuli kuli. Though the oil has been extracted, the peanut paste still has some oil. So I'm going to transfer it into a bowl so that I'll be able to extract the remaining oil. Trust and believe me, it is very difficult to make kuli kuli without extracting most of the oil from the peanut paste. In order to extract the oil, I'm going to be using warm to hot water. The water should not be too hot. It should be comfortable enough for you to dip in your finger. Then I'm going to be adding the water in gradually and be kneading the peanut paste. This is a very traditional way of making peanut oil. So the peanuts are blended into very smooth paste and water is added gradually and kneaded or mixed. Whichever way you do it, as long as you keep it moving, then after a while, the oil will start seeping out. So if this is your first time on my channel or you are a returning viewer and you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and on the notification bell so that you can get an alert whenever I post a video. Like and share the video. Thank you and God bless you. So as you continue to knead, after a period of time, you're going to notice a change in the texture and the consistency. And before you know it, oil will begin to seep out or form. This one does not have a lot of oil. That's why you don't see oil already seeping out. But it is already forming oil. We're going to squeeze the oil out. As you can see, the oil is already forming. See? When you squeeze it, you can see oil. I hope you can see it. So it looks wet, but not wet with water, but wet with oil. So when it looks like this, I'm going to stop adding water. I'm just going to be kneading it until the oil begins to seep out or until it becomes very heavy with oil. Let me not lie to you. It is not an easy job to make peanut oil if you are doing it manually. So you can take breaks once in a while and just leave it. Just let it sit there. It is not going to go bad. It's not going to affect the process. And another tip, once you are taking a break, you can just leave the peanut paste in a warm place. Trust me, it's going to help. I hope you guys are taking note of how the peanut butter has gradually changed to this state. You can see it is really, really saturated with oil. Like I told you before, it does not have a lot of oil compared to when you are making it from scratch, like blending it from the beginning and just extracting it oil would have been seeping out by now but because we already extracted some oil we have to squeeze out the oil so in case you are wondering the amount of water to use i started with one cup of water and this is the leftover so i'm going to be using a chiffon cloth to squeeze out the oil so i'm just going to place a manageable amount of the processed peanut paste in the chiffon cloth and begin to squeeze look at that that is oil if i had not processed it the way i did guess what would be coming out instead of oil the peanut paste would be coming out that's why it is very important to process it before squeezing out the oil so i'm just gonna be repeating the same process until i'm done this is what we're gonna use to make the kuli kuli so let me use this opportunity to send a very special shout out to all those that have subscribed you guys are the best i love you thank you and god bless you it is nearly impossible to squeeze out all the oil from the peanut paste but the amount of oil you're gonna get is gonna be determined by the amount of pressure applied 
So I'm going to pass the oil through the chiffon cloth one more time in an attempt to filter it. Then I'm going to set it aside and let it settle. Now that we are done extracting the peanut oil, look at what we have. This is what we need to make the kuli kuli. As you can see, it is really not sticking together. It is really very grainy. So I'm going to be adding water gradually to moisten and bind everything together. If you are wondering why I am adding water to it, I don't want to extract the oil again. But if you are making kuli kuli, you have to mold it into shape. And since it is grainy, there is no way you can mold it into any shape without adding water. It is just like molding something with clay. You need to add water to moisten it so that it can bind together and it will be very easy to make any shape out of it. In case you are wondering how much water needs to be added to it until it is perfect, it is really difficult to tell. But I'm going to tell you the best way to know when it is ready. So you have to test it. Just grab a little piece of the peanut butter roll it in your palm if it sticks together that means it is ready but if it crumbles and falls apart that means you need to add more water and continue until you get to the perfect consistency guys i forgot to tell you that i am making plain kuli kuli that's why i did not add salt sugar or any spice but if you want to make spicy kuli kuli feel free to add your spices finally it is ready as you can see, it looks like clay. Everything is sticking together. So now you can create any shape you want. So I'm going to show you a few popular shapes that you can make your kuli kuli into. They are practically very easy to make. So I'm just going to let you watch and enjoy. These are just some easy ways to shape your kuli kuli. Now that I'm done, it is time to fry the kuli kuli. So I'm going to be frying the kuli kuli in the peanut oil or granut oil that was extracted from the peanut paste. Once the oil heats up, I'm going to start frying them on medium heat. I'm going to let them fry on one side for about 2 to 3 minutes. Then flip them to the other side and let them fry for about 2 to 3 minutes also. I'm going to be flipping them back and forth at every interval until they are ready, which usually takes about 7 to 10 minutes. 
it is very important to flip them frequently if you don't want them to develop burn spots. After frying them for about 10 minutes, they are ready. So I'm just going to take them out of the oil and continue to fry the rest. After you have made your kuli kuli and you are interested in making suya yaji, I have a recipe. I'm going to leave the link in the description box. You can check it out later. Many people know that kuli kuli is a snack and that it is also used in making suya spice, a dry rub used in making suya. But there are so many other dishes that ground kuli kuli is added to. That's why there are some kuli kuli made without adding spice or anything. And you could grind those kuli kuli and add it to any meal of your choice. If you have ever eaten Hausa salad, you already know that they add ground kuli kuli to it. When I'm done frying the kuli kuli, I'm going to set them aside to cool down. As for the oil that the kuli kuli was fried in, it's no longer known as peanut oil. It is now known as kuli kuli oil. That is my kuli kuli in Hausa. So I'm just going to strain the oil to remove the kuli kuli particles. So let us talk about the difference between peanut oil and kuli kuli oil. So the main difference is that the peanut oil, which is the granite oil, is pure and it is more pricey. But the kuli kuli oil is less pricey because it has been used, so you can't call it pure peanut oil anymore. So if you don't know the difference between peanut oil and kuli kuli oil, they might sell the kuli kuli oil to you at the price of peanut oil. From my own experience growing up in the north, the best way to know the difference is to taste it. And if you don't know the taste of peanut oil, it is going to be very difficult to tell them apart because they taste almost the same. If you fry the kuli kuli well, it should be very dry and crunchy. That is when you know it is well fried. But if not, if it is very soft, you're not going to enjoy it and it might go bad quickly. Like I told you before, if it is what you want to snack on, you can add sugar, salt or any spice of your choice. But if not, this is how kuli kuli is generally made. So now that you know how to make kuli kuli, why don't you give this technique and this recipe a try? I promise you, you're going to be so proud of yourself. So thank you guys for watching. Till I see you next time. Stay safe. Stay blessed. I love you. Bye.